بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We begin with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. Salam alaykum everybody. Usually I would speak before uh, our illustrious scholar and brother, um, Dr. Yasser Qadi, also who is a very good friend of mine. I have seen him, I have seen him eviscerate beef brisket on more than one occasion, mashallah. <laughs> Evisceration is the word to use. Um, but he graciously, graciously uh, went first because my flight was canceled yesterday and then my flight arrived around 7 a.m. today and then, mashallah, there was no hotel room, which is all cool, like, it doesn't matter. So I slept in the lobby. Um, no, it's good, man, those things are good for you. It's, it's great, not a problem. Um, I think my speaker buddy is somewhere in Lake Michigan right now. And, yeah, and, no, I'm joking. Everybody's like, oh, wow. And when I, I slept past my MENA program, I apologized to MENA. I got you. I swear to God, I got you. And, and then I came and, you know, I told him I'm, I'm a little groggy. So he graciously um, went ahead and, and rocked the mic. So what, what we've been asked to talk about is our time and our challenges. And the context of what I read in the description is talking about leadership. So you're going to probably need to write some things down. I have to do this really quickly because I want to give you the opportunity to ask questions uh, with someone as immense as our sheikh. You need to take advantage of that. I even have some questions for him. I'm going first. The first is that if we look at the prophets, we believe that the prophets epitomize really leadership in its universal form. I remember in the 90s, uh, Dr. Rafiq Bacon, who many of you know, we did a program on leadership. And he brought out this Forbes magazine survey where they had asked like the top CEOs uh, in America, what are the qualities of a leader? And the first quality was truthfulness, to be an honest person, to have integrity. So the first quality that the prophets have, according to a great imam, you don't have to write, I say names, forgive me, it's just my habit. But I think if we know the names of like our favorite sports players and actresses and actors and then, you know, I felt when I was young, I should know the names of people who are important in our tradition. There's a great imam named Imam Al-Marzuqi. He wrote a book called Aqidat Al-Awam. It's a book that we teach at Ella Khan's Institute, uh, introducing creed. And he mentions that the first quality of prophets is bisidq, is truthfulness. So the first quality, if I'm looking at myself as becoming a leader, and what I mean by leader, we, we don't have enough time, is not that you're like leading the world. Every one of us are a leader. I was playing, you know, people ask me, what is your creed? I said, I'm Assassin's Creed, right? My, my son and I were playing Assassin's Creed, and I said to him, you know, one day hopefully you'll be like a leader. And he was like, no, I'm not going to be a leader. Da, da, da. And then he did all this incredible stuff on the screen. And I said, well, it looks like you're leading in something, like you're good at this. Every one of us has something in our life that we lead or that we direct, regardless of its level. So the first quality is truthfulness. Marzuki said, Bisitqi wa tabrihi wal amana. You know, he says in his poem, it's a poem he memorized many years ago, that the first quality is to be honest. Honesty, a great scholar named Ar Raghib al Asfahani said, honesty means two things. Number one is honesty with Allah. To be honest, it's mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah, those who broke this agreement, this oath they took with Allah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. To be honest in that. And that means to struggle with it. Not to do it perfectly, but to struggle, to, to, to fall, to grow, to learn. The Prophet said, everybody makes mistakes. So to be, to be truthful in coming back to him. Those who don't repent are the ones who are wrong. So to be truthful meaning I try my best. Like I don't like accident, like, oh man, I hope I don't hit that alarm for Fajr, like really, I'm like, I was like, you know, the good wife binging for like the last two days was amazing. And, no, there has to be sincerity in our relationship with Allah, that even when we fail, we still come back to him. The second is to be truthful to those around us, to be honest. And the Prophet Sallallahu was asking a believer a lie, he said, no. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, usually in the Quran, when Allah talks about the believers, the context is truthfulness. 
The second quality that we should look for, and we don't have time to go through all these, you can write them down and you should build and elaborate on these things after truthfulness. The second one is what? Intelligence. He said, The line of the poet says, and this is a poem if you're from Morocco, West Africa, or Egypt. This was basically taught for at least seven, eight hundred years in those communities. It was memorized by people. And he says that intelligence, fatana. Imam Ibn, uh, Ibn Qayyim said that intelligence means two things. As Sheikh Yasser pointed out, knowledge of the religion. And that's why I believe like if you're going to be an MSA president or you're going to take on the leadership of a community, you should also spend some time. And institutions, if they were smart, would sponsor you to take like a course at Qalam or to take a course with Maghrib to take some kind of course that will give you, hey, these are the fundamental principles that are non-negotiables. And these are the things which are negotiable. In DC, th this summer, we plan to do a, a, an intensive called What Bends? What can bend and what can't bend? The presumption of postmodernity is that bending itself is bending. <laughs> this is the problem of postmodernity, that the presumption is that bending itself is bending. There's absolute chaos in the world and you can destruct, deconstruct everything and you can invoke every ism until the only ism you have left is nihilism. And this is an outcome, but if you're not educated and I'm not educated and we're not engrossed in some kind of formalized study where we understand what is negotiable, what is non-negotiable. Because that's part of being sincere to Allah and sincere to His Messenger and honest is to have some basic knowledge. So I would encourage you before you take on a position that, and your institution should be so serious that they're able to fund that. They're funding that educational process to learn the basics, to learn the fundamentals. The second thing Imam Ibn Qayyim said that equals intelligence is knowledge of the people, wisdom, to understand where we are. And I'll give you a story. When I became Muslim with my friend, we used to DJ together in high school. So imagine your best friend became Muslim. Imagine when you saw that. Like you used to smoke blunts, and now you're making dicker. You know, you went from the liquor store to the dicker store. You know, it was amazing, right? And it's like my homie, this is my boy. He married a Moroccan woman, hence he's overweight, but he's happy. <laughs> Brother killing the couscous. Um, so we became Muslim, and next to our mosque was a convenience store, and this brother in this convenience store, speaking of postmodernity, you could find everything from a Bible to pornography, right? That's postmodernity. Cable television, Dr. Yasser, if you want to understand postmodernity, cable television. Everything from ESPN to the most nefarious things you can imagine, and right next to that will be Christian broadcasting. You know, you're like, so if you're trying to lower your gaze, you get like whiplash. Trying to watch cable television. That's postmodernity. Postmodernity, although it's funny, I just dropped something on you, so pay attention. Postmodernity gives your soul whiplash because you're, you're always like this. Nothing stabilized. So you get hurt in your heart. So we decided that we're going to make dawah to this brother. So we went there. We knew him. He's from Bangladesh. He's a cool guy. We went in there dressed like sheks with turbans and thobes and everything. This is like 1994. Pac, I think, was still alive. We went in, and the brother saw me, and I was giving khutbah even then in this small community. They were trying to groom young brothers and sisters, right? We went in. It was like, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Waikum salam wa And I got a 24-pack of beer, right? And some, I think some Nat Turners or something. I forgot. No, some, uh, some Marlboros. And then we went up there, and then Mujahid, I can't say what he grabbed because that would indict him. And we put it all on the cash register, and the brother starts, like, going crazy. He's like, Imam Sahib, like, right? I was like, just ring it up, man. It's, it's light beer. <laughs> I'm watching my carbs. I'm my boss down, I'm watching my carbs. So he got freaked out, and then Mujahid said to him, hey, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. He said, are you surprised to see us buying it? He said, yeah. He said, well, this is how we feel when, you, when we see you selling it. And he made toba. he came back to Allah. That's fatana. That's understanding someone. So the second quality is to be intelligent. That means also to understand how to run an institution. You should not accept the leadership of a community if you do not know how anything about nonprofit work, social enterprise, B corporations, structuring an institution 
around a vision that's strategic. Be very serious about going into the work that you do. Just don't think, okay, I'm going to accept the position and I do not know what I'm doing. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu when he held up this flag and he said, who will take this flag? Everybody wanted to take it. But then he said, who will give this flag its right? And everybody took their hands down except Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. So leadership into institutions means also I should have some familiarity with how to run an institution. Not just I'm going to be the president or whatever. No. So knowledge of religion, knowledge of the people, and the knowledge of the task at hand equals fatana. And there's an important point. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was not able to complete something, Allah always provided him with someone who would help him complete it perfectly. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that takes us into volunteer work. The third quality, and I'm running out of time, is a tabligh. And a tabligh means that our goal is to propagate what we consider to be good and truthful. As Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun said with the blessing of Allah, كَيْنُ سَبِّحَكَ كَثِيرًا وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا Like, you blessed us with this ability to communicate, so now we're going to praise you. Now we're going to extol your virtues. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means whatever talent you or I have, we should use that talent in a way that magnifies uh, our relationship with our Lord and encourages others around us. This is part of tabliq. And that's why we say, kitmanul ilm haram, to hide knowledge is forbidden. So again, three qualities I mentioned of leadership. Number one is truthfulness. Number two is intelligence. And intelligence can be relative, right? Sometimes our intelligence goes up, sometimes it goes down. Except with the prophets, it was stable. The third thing is propagation, to call. And within that call, there are eight things we should know, and I have to say this really quickly. I apologize because of time. Number one is, Allah says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرًا If we're going to call people, we have to have knowledge. The basic knowledge, not scholarship. You know what's happened in this country? I feel, I think Sheikh Yasser and I talked about this before, is that we've exchanged dysfunctional scholarship dysfunctional literacy for dysfunctional scholarship. We have neither or. But what we need is functional literacy. When even Abbas was asked, what's knowledge? He said, knowledge, I'm going to put it in our language so we can understand it. Knowledge is what moves you. Knowledge is what makes you passionate. Knowledge is what brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there should be knowledge of the religion in the things which move me. And you as People who are not, you're not ignorant people by any means. When I became Muslim, I set out a goal for myself when I wanted to study. Number one was to learn the basics. Like what do I have to know so I don't become stupid white convert guy who does all the fundraisers and they say, look how Islam is spreading. Mashallah, brother, come up here. Right? And I'm like, yeah, uh, we pray eight times a day and uh, I'm going to the club to make it rain later. Like, hey, what does this brother know? Can't believe I just said that. Second thing is, I don't even know what that means, I swear to God. Second thing is, like, go outside, pray for rain. Second thing is, I wanted to learn the things that made me doubt. What are the things that challenged me, like, like, the situation of Aisha, but I wouldn't, in those days, we didn't have Twitter or Facebook, so I wasn't like, hey, y Yasser Qadi, like, can you please deconstruct the notion of Sayyidina Bilal in light of certain, you know, esoteric theories? I just had this, you know, class in sociology. No, we would actually travel to a scholar. We used to drive to see Sheikh Mohammed Noor in St. Louis. So you would prepare your questions. And when you got there, you couldn't be rude because you knew your time with him was limited or Dr. Ingrid Madison. And we would ask them questions about things that we didn't know. So, learning the fundamentals and learning things that cause me to doubt as a convert, right? The next quality that we should have is knowledge of the people. Imam Al-Qarafi said, if you give a fatwa, as Dr. Yasser was talking about in Al-Ihkam, it's this incredible text, if you give a fatwa to someone that is rooted in a cultural ascetic and you fail to know the culture of that person, your law license should be suspended. You have to understand who you speak to. The, th the second quality for the person who calls to Allah after knowledge is to work in a group, group work. The third quality is what subhanallah is spirituality. I have to hurry. 
The fourth quality, this is antithetical to postmodernity. It means that I have a position, I am anchored in my character. I do not sell out my character to appease other people. So he said, pay attention, I apologize because of time. The qualities of leadership are being truthful, having intelligence, and the next is da'wah. And then the conditions of da'wah, underneath that you should write the following. Knowledge, group work, spirituality means I pray at night when people are sleeping. I fast when people are eating, right? That's what that means. I should try to. And then the fourth we said is what? Tamiz, to differentiate myself from the evil around me. I don't just go with the status quo. And then there are three more. We have to finish under the qualities of da'wah. Wisdom. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Wisdom means to do the right thing at the right time, like the, the, the Bengali brother in the convenience store. No offense to Bengalis, I love fish. <laughs> but I like potatoes, not rice, from Oklahoma. Second one is mawa'idat al hasana, is to argue in a method, like if you're on John Stewart, which is gone now, right? But if you're on John Stewart, you're going to be like, well, it's great to be here, John. Thanks, man. Right? You're not going to talk like that. You're going to be like a little bit more loose. You're going to be a little bit, maybe with Bill Riley, you're like, What's up, man? <laughs> right? So that means you adapt to the situation. You speak what we call iqtida'ul had in rhetoric. And then the last quality of da'wah, I'm going to say these all again, don't worry, is that I prepare myself for arguments. I go and do research. So again, three qualities of leadership. I said, number one, being truthful. Number two, intelligence. Number three, I said, what is... Propagation, tabligh, and under that are conditions for da'wah. Number one is to what? Have knowledge. Knowledge makes us sincere. Like when you realize, like for example, now in Washington, D.C., where I live, the murder rate is 30% higher than it was last year. Like, we should care about people. When we see that Tinder and those type of apps have contributed now to a 33% rise in SDCs. Like, those are, like we should be concerned. People are masakin, man. They're just chasing after hawa. Like that should be a concern for us. Not just that we blast people, but we're invested in people. We care about them as part of having knowledge of their situation. We realize that the largest number of homeless in this country are children. That America is the top three largest country in trafficked women. Those are things that we should be invested in. Black Lives Matter is Black Lives Matter, but it has to matter to us in a way that we support and remove structural oppression. Because we care, because we know. And then the third we said is that there should be da'wah. And we mentioned the conditions of the da'wah. The last, and I'll finish inshallah, condition of a leader. And I'll repeat them again one more time because I know it was a lot, mashallah. The last is that I should be someone of integrity. What's called al-amana. Someone that people can trust. When I went to Boston four years ago, I'll give you an example. I, pre I met the city councilman, his name is Tito Jackson. Not that Tito Jackson. And everybody asked me. And I went into his office and I sat down, I prayed two rakat. I was like, oh Allah, I'm about to meet the city council. This is the first, second day I was there. I went in and he sat down, he looked at me and he said, so. I said, so. He said, brother. I said, brother. And then he got quiet. I said, how can my community serve you? I don't know how I said it because it's not what I wanted to say. I wanted to make a million demands. We want to have an Eid holiday. Our sisters this, that, this, this. We need the trains on Eid day to work this. And he stood up and he said, you're the first person to ever walk in this office and ask me what you can do for me. And he said, that's integrity. And I said, do you need us to walk kids to school in gang-ridden areas? And I started getting ideas, you know what I mean? Do you need us to do this, 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 this? How about a backpack program we do now with sister, one sister in Boston? And he was like, wow. So then he said, you know what? Tomorrow is my first prayer. I just took this position. It's my first prayer since I've been in, in office. And I'm going to call my, the person I had asked to lead the prayer and say, no, I want you to do it even though I'm Christian. Right? The point is, if people feel they can trust you, then they will take your leadership. But if they can't trust you, they won't let you lead them. And that's why the prophet is Amin before he's Nabi. Many of us in America, we want to be Nabi before we've been Amin. 
So people don't know much about us. They don't. Right, this is a whole new thing for me. I'm old school. You don't, you don't, you don't interrupt Nas when he's, you know what I'm saying? Like rock him, you just let him finish. But I understand it. So we have to be trustworthy like we see what Iman is doing here in Chicago. Ma'roof is doing down the street. We see the work that Project Reach is doing in Washington, D.C. We see people who are akhfiya. We don't even know them. They're not speaking. But the work they're doing, people trust them so they take religious guidance from them. And I'll give an example. I was consulting a mosque in the West Coast. I apologize. Uh, and it's in a Hispanic neighborhood. And the brother was telling me, like, we put a Hispanic sign up, like, come worship one God. In Spanish, right? And he's like, but nobody came to our barbecue. I was like, of course not, man. This is what everybody says to the Latino Hispanic community, man. Like, it's very cheesy. So he's like, what should we do? I said, well, two weeks from now, you have school starting, right? And you, you have this massive immigration discussion. So why don't you consider doing two things? Why don't you provide vaccinations for children? Right? We have enough medical professionals in our community that can do that. Why don't you provide vaccinations for your neighborhood's children at the mosque? Right? And then secondly, why don't you provide pro bono immigration attorneys to give people some basic advice, at least in the initial phase of immigration? And the brother told me, but that's not what a mosque does. And I was like, then what does the mosque do? And he said, I'm serious. He said, they call to Allah. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, how, how did you get that with that postmodernity? So four qualities of a leader that I mentioned. Honesty. Number two, intelligence. Religious as well as professional intelligence and integrity. Number three is propagation. Do not sacrifice the principles of Islam. For others, because there'll be no barakah, there'll be no help from Allah. No matter how great, no matter how many people respond. And the fourth we said is what? To be someone who people can trust. And under the quality of the caller, we said these eight things, right? Sorry, it's a lot. Number one is, not, but you didn't come here just to cheerlead and get happy, right? You came, you have someone like this, you should learn, right? You want to take something home, have some grit in them notes. Number one, we said, is knowledge, religion, and people. Number two, group work. Number three, spirituality. Number four, I differentiate myself from the evil around me and the facade. I do not use the facade, the evil, as an excuse to be a caller. No, no, I have to take certain positions. Yeah, I can kick it, I can hang out, but I stop right there. Right? The next is what? Wisdom. After that is the ability to articulate ourselves in different ways. Like today you heard me make some references and you heard the young people like, mm -mm, right? Because you can't just go one direction. Sometimes you got to flip it up. See that? Watch it. What, clap? Are you a Zayn Malik fan or something? And then the last one is be prepared in how you argue. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum.